Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Are you confused about the different ways you could sharpen an image in Photoshop? Over the next few videos, I'm going to talk about three of the more popular ways you could sharpen an image using Photoshop. In this video, we're going to talk about the unsharp mask. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing pretty much anything in Photoshop is that Photoshop is destructive. So you want to make sure that you preserve the integrity of your original layer, original image. So when we're sharpening, we're going to sharpen on its own layer. Right now, all I have over here is a background layer. I don't want to apply sharpening to that. I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command J on my Mac. If you have a PC, hit Control J. So we're going to do all our sharpening to this layer. Now, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to Filter, and I'm going to go down to Sharpen, and then at the very bottom is Unsharp Mask, and we'll click on that, and you can see the Unsharp Mask dialog box pops up. Pretty simple, only three sliders and a preview window. I'm going to drag the preview window over his eye, because most often for a portrait, we want to sharpen his eye. And I'm using a portrait as an example, but you could sharpen anything, a landscape photo with the Unsharp Mask, uh, animal photo, wildlife, anything. Uh, just using the portrait as an example. Now, it has a preview checkbox. It actually will show you your sharpening in real time if that is checked. If it's unchecked, it really, it won't. It won't show you the sharpening in real time. So if your uh, computer is really lagging, you may have to uncheck that box and you'll get better performance. And you're going to need to use then this little window to see how you're sharpening. Now we have three sliders, amount, radius, and threshold. And they're really pretty simple when you really understand what they actually do. Amount is like the volume control. How much sharpening are you going to apply to the image? Radius, are you going to apply that sharpening to the smaller areas or the larger areas? If it's the smaller areas, you want to move the radius slider towards the left. Smaller area in this case would be like his eyelashes, these lines in his eye, his iris, things like that. So that's smaller, larger areas would be just like his clothing, larger things like that, that aren't um, as uh, like uh, precise, I guess you would say. Threshold, this is the confusing one. A lot of people have problems with. Um, when you are applying the sharpening, are you going to apply it, uh, and you wanna apply it, let's say, to the smaller areas, you're gonna have to have a lower threshold. The threshold is kind of like the bodyguard. It's going to allow some, some people in and it's going to keep some people out. As you move it to the right, it's going to keep more people out than it lets in. <laughs> it, I don't know how else to word it. Let me try to explain it better. I'm going to, for this example, I'll move threshold all the way down so it's as though we don't have a bodyguard at the door. It's allowing all the sharpening to come through and hit everywhere on the image. On the other hand, if I start to move threshold to the right and I move it to the extreme right, we have a bunch of bodyguards at the door. It's not allowing any of the sharpening to come through. Now, if we want, on the other hand, the sharpening just to hit the larger areas, then we'll take away some of the bodyguard so that it's just going to hit some of the larger areas. What threshold is actually looking at is the contrast in the image. And if it... Uh, if you wanted to look at the minute contrast, the kind of contrast between individual hairs, you would move it to the extreme left. On the other hand, if you wanted to more look at the contrast between, say, um, like his, uh, you know, like darker part of his chin here and his lighter part of his chin there, then you move it to the right. So it's... Um, kind of a, like I mentioned, kind of like a bodyguard in a way. Now, the way I go about adjusting this is, first of all, is I put threshold all the way down. That's the way I start out. Then I'll put amount somewhere in like one third to one half of the way up. So that's somewhere between 50 and 100. So we'll put it at 70. Then with those two adjustments set for now, I'll go into radius and I'll move radius around until I think it's sharpened the way I want. I'll also click on and off the preview button to get an idea how it's sharpening. 
Sometimes then I'll also zoom in, even though I'm seeing it right here, I like to see it in the eye off and on with the preview button. So I'll zoom in on the image by hitting Command plus. Now the plus sign on most keyboards share, is shared with the equal sign on the key. So you're probably seeing uh, Command equal on my uh, display, but I'm hitting Command plus. And um, then I'll do the preview off and on here to get an idea of what we're doing. Once I kind of like that, but it's really kind of affecting the skin a little bit too much, then I'll start bringing some bodyguards in by moving the threshold uh, to the right. Then I'll take preview off and on. If I'm not getting anywhere with it, if it's either still not looking sharp enough, I'll move the amount slider to the right. If it's looking like it's too sharp all the time, I'll move the amount slider to the left, then I'll come back down to threshold and move that to the right. Then I'll again preview and see what it's doing. And I kind of like it. I think it did a decent job. I might take threshold down a little more for this example. All right. So it's sharpening this skin. Typically, we don't want to sharpen the skin. But let's just say I really like what it did to his hair and his eyes. But I don't like what it did to his skin. But I'm going to click OK. So we're going to click OK. Now I'm going to zoom back out by hitting Command-0. Control zero if you have a PC that fits it to your screen. Now I'm here. Now it sharpened his eyes wonderfully, his eyebrows, his hair, his clothing perfectly, but it sharpened his skin and I don't like it. That's one of the downfalls of the unsharp mask. It sharpens everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask. Now I'll go down here in this little mask icon. I'll click on that and we applied a mask. Make sure you're clicked on the mask. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mask the sharpening away from his skin by getting a brush. I'll hit the B key on his keyboard. Since we have a white mask, we're going to paint in black. Make sure that black is the foreground color here. If you're not seeing black and white here, hit D on your keyboard to get the default colors. If black isn't the foreground color, hit X on your keyboard to swap them. Then what we'll do is we'll take that brush. I could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. And I'll just come in and remove it, the, remove the sharpening from his skin. And I'm going to leave it on his lips, his eyebrows, his eyelashes, his eyes, his irises specifically, his hair, his clothing, and so on. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea that you would use the mask to uh, remove the sharpening from where you don't want it. Now, that's really the basics of the unsharp mask. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I can't come back in here and readjust it. That if you find that you need to always go back and readjust sharpening, what you should do is before you open up the unsharp mask, right after you duplicate the layer, create a smart object. And we'll do that in our next video. In our next video, we're going to talk about smart sharpen. And in that video, I'll demonstrate how when you create a smart object, you'll be able to come back in and readjust things. So hopefully that made sense with the unsharp mask. Practice with it, and I think you'll find it's very effective. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.